Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love, guys. Now, this first story comes from Corgicino or Corgicino, whichever it is, and it's titled My 26 Female, a Strange Sister, 23 Female wants to talk to me months after almost ruining my wedding day. How should I respond? My sister, 23 female, and I, 26 female, have a complicated relationship. Our parents divorced when we were young, and we lived with our narcissistic mother until I left to stay with my dad at age 16, her staying with our mum, whom I'm now no contact with. We went through a lot together in childhood, and we're there for each other when our mum was abusive. However, as we grew up, we bickered like normal sisters do throughout our teenage years, except it would get intense at times and we would yell at each other and get into some nasty fights. It goes without saying that we had trauma. And I was our mum's scapegoat while she was the golden child. In our adult life over the past five to six years, I've shown only compassion and kindness towards her. Even when I wouldn't agree with a lot of her bad decision and lifestyle choices and has done morally questionable things for money. Being arrested, had DUIs, is a dancer at a club, has only fans, dates married, sugar daddies, etc. I can see that our childhood trauma had a negative impact on her and she very clearly has mental illness, which I believe she's at least aware of. Our relationship hasn't been super close as we are complete opposites but in general it's been okay i've always invited her to my boyfriend's family events etc but i've always walked on eggshells around her because that's how short-tempered and unstable she is fast forward to my wedding this april she arrives very late completely missing the ceremony and almost misses photos seems out of it and my first instinct is she's already drunk or something but i let it slide i don't even show my frustration towards her Later in the evening during the reception, someone lets me know that my now mother-in-law and other family members saw my sister snorting drugs or some other drug right next to the bar. Obviously embarrassed, I try not to let it bother me and continue on with my big day. Then, an hour or so later, I find out she's had a mental breakdown in the bathroom and our other sister, our sister, has to take her home. Later that evening, once my now husband and I arrive at our cabin for the night, I see multiple texts from her consisting of very hateful, toxic things, such as I've always tried to look better than her ever since we were kids. I've always put her down, and she doesn't want to be in my life anymore because it feels wrong. It upset me deeply that night and never texted her back. She texted me last night for the first time since April saying, can we talk soon? Hope you're doing okay. Truthfully, I don't know if I want to talk to her. I simply don't know what to say. I don't know if I want to reconnect with her. She's very toxic and while I know she has mental illness and have felt bad for her over the past few years, I want to protect myself too. What would you do? Now, I found this one a bit of a weird one because I think what I would do and what I would advise to the OP in the situation are different. I'm always someone who's always curious about what the other person's gonna say, even you know if it ends up as, you know, I still don't want nothing to do with you. I'm always kind of curious about what the person's going to say. It's always worrying in this particular case because, you know, it didn't seem like she was going to apologize or she's apologetic or anything. You know, you, you received this text that said, can we talk soon? Hope you're doing it okay. You'd have thought it would have started off, look, I'm really sorry about the past. Can we talk soon? Hope you're doing okay. And I understand if you don't want to meet up, etc., etc. But it didn't start like that. So, so my thoughts, and it's the same thing I always think when I read stories like this, is what does this person bring into your life? You know, we know that she might be mentally unwell, which, you know, is a it might be a reason why she's being this way, but it certainly still doesn't excuse the behavior towards you as well. And just quite frankly, you don't have to accept that in your life. It's, it's totally up to you. But Winter Travel says, your sister's mental illness explains her toxicity, but it does not excuse it. You could answer her text with, I'm well and I hope you are too. I'm not ready to talk. If that changes, I'll let you know. Please respect my boundaries. If she persists, remind her that she is crossing your boundary and if it continues, you will no longer respond, period. Opie says, hi, thank you so much for your insight. I really like your short, simple message if I were to respond to her. 
I'm afraid to respond because when I have in similar situations in the past, she's been very defensive and hateful in response. This is why for the past few years, I've walked on eggshells and have not voiced my opinions to her if they contradicted hers. Or if I've been hurt by her and I have instead ignored her, I've been very careful around her to protect my peace, so to speak. Why couldn't she have started her text by apologizing and admitting her wrongdoings instead of just saying she wants to talk? Who knows if she's going to take accountability once I open that door of communication? Blue says, do you see her as a positive in your life at all since being adults? You see her as pain and trauma, but you can't keep holding on to the little girl. Your sister is a grown woman who clearly doesn't have any positive feelings towards you. Maybe sober she realizes how badly she messed up. Good for her, but that isn't a get out of jail free card. Some posts have some great simple responses. You can give yourself more time away from her if that is what you need. Opie says, thank you so much for your insight. You make a lot of really good, relevant points. Honestly, I don't know what to make of her blaming some of her childhood trauma on me. The last time this happened before my wedding, which was during my birthday in January, she texts me saying, I didn't realize I have unresolved trauma from the way you treated me as kids, in which I responded something like, we went through a lot together. And while I don't remember a lot of it, I was most likely projecting and I'm sorry. I thought we had moved past it and then the wedding thing happened and I was at my wit's end of pain and didn't reach out to her since. And there's a comment below that which replies to OP's comment talking about how she's only doing it at special events or seems to anyway. It reminded me of a story that we covered in the past where that exact same thing happened always when the OP was having a special event that the sister would have some sort of issue going on, sometimes requiring a hospital treatment, etc. But Blue replied to OP and said, she pulled this on your birthday too. She seems to lash out on your special events. You described her as short-tempered and unstable at, at boyfriend's family events. I think these at least, she doesn't need to be invited anymore. Saying something like, you don't seem happy at these events. So I still love you, but I'm not going to be inviting you to them. You can still love her and encourage her to get some therapy then figure out how much communication you want. Cutting off a family member is hard. I spent 30 years hoping someone would change and she never did. The one time we did talk about it, it took three hours and it boiled down to she didn't want to change. I feel sad that she is isolated, but honestly, things are more peaceful without her. The OP did update the post. They said thank you to everyone who responded and provided valuable feedback. I truly appreciate it. I decided not to respond so I could think about it and allow myself to get back to her when I was ready. She sent the following text today after receiving no response. So the text messages started off from the sister saying, hey, can I talk to you soon? I hope you're doing okay. Then some time later said again, "Never mind, it's cool. You're too busy living your perfect cookie cutter life that you work so hard to ditch your real roots. I'm not gonna beg my blood sister to talk to me. OP responded to that and says, and that there is why I didn't respond. I think it's best for both of us for the time being that we do not have a relationship. In recent years, all we seem to do is make each other unhappy unintentionally. If that changes, I'll let you know. Please respect my boundaries. Hope you are well and wish you all the best. OP then continues in their post and says, before I could send the response you see in the screenshot, she blocked me. So my message didn't go through. I suppose if she ever unblocks me, she will see it. I have blocked her as well. I was afraid that she hasn't changed and this would be how she acts. I'm relieved she's let herself out of my life. I've taken the necessary measures, including years of therapy to better myself from our abusive childhood and broke the cycle. I hope eventually she can do the same. And then one comment with a reply from OP. So Galleon Raider says, the sister is toxic as hell and shows that she is jealous and will always take the first opportunity to attack OP. Being blood doesn't mean anything if that blood relative is a horrible person and unhealthy to have a relationship with. Opie responded saying, a commenter on my first post mentioned how she could possibly be envious of how my life has turned out compared to hers. However, she's had every same opportunity as me and has allowed herself to become this way. I refuse to let her drag me down with her. She mentioned to me once that she realizes she has some mental issues and suddenly feels really strong emotions. She's self-aware, so I just hope she eventually seeks the help she desperately needs. That's a real sad situation that it did turn out like that in the end. I mean, it's got to hurt OP, you know, that is her sister. Regardless of 
what's been going on between them and they know the childhood trauma they have but like we always say it's not an excuse to be an arsehole to someone else it may be a reason of course like some of them comments said but it's not an excuse to be an arsehole and in some albeit like i said sad way it's probably a good outcome for op right now because they don't need that to be continuing on with their life to have this toxicity shoved towards them all the time what do you guys make of this situation how would you deal with it if it was you let us know your thoughts down in the comments below let's move on to another story and our next story comes from puzzle headed tie 5558 and says i'm amazed by and also kind of afraid of my girlfriend and it does come with an update as well i've 28 male been dating jen 27 female for two years and she's amazing kind smart funny pretty everything she has a really warm and bubbly personality smiles and laughs a lot i say she has rnf resting nice face she's also 5 5 of caged fury <laughs> between her looks and approachable personality she gets hit on by guys a lot she also gets a lot of hate from women i used to get really jealous when guys talk to her and she would get mad at me for being jealous let me be 100 percent clear she's not particularly flirty she doesn't initiate conversations doesn't lead guys on She's not looking for male attention. I'm six foot one and somewhat intimidating build. So my go-to move is standing tall with my arms crossed and staring at the guy then saying something like, is there an issue? Instead of immediately jumping in when guys hit on her and causing an argument with her, I started to pay attention to how she handles unwanted attention. She's like a ninja deflecting creeps and mean girls. She reads the situation and knows when to act nice when to ignore them, when to be firm, and when to leave. I started to realize I don't need to be jealous and she can take care of herself. I tore up my knee over the summer. She basically moved in to help me during my surgery and rehab. She's been amazing. Taking me to things when I couldn't drive, making me food when I couldn't even stand, helping me do my PT. I'm still wearing a knee brace, but I'm getting there. She loves to dance, although I'm terrible. I love going with her because it makes her happy and she looks incredible when she's dancing. Since my injury, we haven't gone out much and we haven't gone dancing. I'm not able to dance more than a slow dance, so I got her friends to go out with her so she has someone to dance with. Pretty sure she likes dancing with her female friends more anyway. It was me, Jen, a couple and two girls. The couple left pretty early. Watching her dance, I had a moment of clarity. What I could think of is how lucky I was that I'd be going home with the person I most loved in the world. I realized I wanted to marry her. Three attractive women dancing are going to draw attention. I'm no hater, but it was funny watching guys try to hit on them and glad that wasn't me anymore. This group of guys in particular weren't getting the hint. They surrounded the girls and tried to dance behind them. Jen said something and pushed them aside. The girls come back to where I was sitting and the guys are glaring at us. Club closes and we're walking out towards my car. Turns out the guys weren't ready to let it go. A couple of the guys were insulting us, especially me for being a beta. And I'm not a real man. Real incel energy. The irony that they are the guys I should have been protecting my girlfriend from was totally lost on them. They're getting louder and more aggressive. We try to defuse the situation, but they're not letting up. A fight seemed inevitable. We're a block from the club, so I tell the girls we're going to head back to where the people waiting for Ubers are standing. They block our way and I'm about ready to get in their faces, hoping I can intimidate my way out while the girls get away. I had one bad leg and if someone shoves me, I'll probably fall down. Plus, there is only one of me. Jen suddenly releases a stream of insults and obscenities towards these guys and doesn't let up. I'm not sure she even stopped to take a breath. They were shocked and so was I by the genuine rage directed towards them. I've never seen her so angry. They're backing up while she's moving towards them screaming. She's driving them back towards the crowd while also creating a commotion. Told you, she's a ninja. Some club goer starts to come over and it's clear they aren't on the guy's side. The guys are embarrassed because they're getting upgraded by 120 pounds of white hot rage. This is the part where I should be embarrassed. My girlfriend, who is... 8 inches shorter and 75 pounds lighter kept me from getting my butt kicked. Honestly though, it was one of the most badass things I've ever seen. Yeah, they are 
The same woman that was the most gentle person when I couldn't walk also stared down a group of creeps outside a club. She's a keeper. I better get a ring on this one before she realizes she can do better. Top comment with a response on this one. So base tens machine says, I wish guys would take cues like this better. I've had boyfriends really misread a situation and start fights that put me in danger. Caught an elbow to the face once. Thanks so much, Jeff, you big strong man, you. <laughs> Good luck with your girl. Opie says, sorry to hear about catching the elbow. It was tough to control my feelings at first. We go to, until the injury, a lot of places where single people meet. Concerts, festivals, bars, clubs, rec sports, climbing gym. So guys are already looking for women to chat up. Not a great reflection on me, but one of the reasons I started to pay attention to her interactions was because I wanted to prove she was being flirty. And that was the real problem. Well, I realized she wasn't. And she was giving me no reason to be jealous. I remember some years back, I was in like, um, it's kind of like a pub slash nightclub turns into a nightclub at a certain part of the night. And, you know, it's pretty notorious around here about being a bit, a bit rough. I think it has to be said. Saturday night, cheesy 80s music going on, couple of drinks in, you know, having a little boogie around and all that sort of stuff. Just, you know, in your own little world, having a little dance away. And you could see this guy who was clearly trying to flirt with this woman. This woman, she was like... She, I, I don't know how tall she was tall though she was real tall and this guy keeps dancing up behind her and she told him basically to fuck off a couple of times she gave him ample warning let me tell you but he he looked absolutely smashed to bits but and the reason why this it was so funny to me it's just the way he disappears at the door so the dance floor's there and if you just sort of picture it as a square at the very end is the exit door like two double doors which are an exit and this guy walks up behind her one final time well, it is the final time because he puts his hands on her hips. She turns around and goes, will you just fuck off and just launches him. He just flies out the double doors and never comes back. <laughs> never seen the guy ever again. Could be in another dimension for all I know. I can just remember like stopping dancing. Well, most people stop dancing because, you know, a bit of an escalation, you know, and just thinking fucking fair play, you know. <laughs> But OP does update their post and said thank you to everyone that read and commented on my previous post. I was a nervous wreck writing it. I was trying to work up the courage to talk to her about our future and make sure we're on the same page. I knew she loves me and wants to be my wife, but she has a lot she wants to achieve, like going to grad school. I would have understood if she wanted to wait to get engaged. It still would have hurt though. She was sitting on the couch reading a book and I was just looking at her. I was thinking, she's so amazing. Just talk to her. Everything will be fine. She looked at me through her big, dumb glasses and smiled. That was the final push I needed. Fortunately, we were both in the same place and ready to take the next step. We just went on a long weekend. We were walking to a little spot with a beautiful view for a picnic and pretended to stumble and re-injure my knee. Pretty sure she didn't buy it, but she played along. She loved the ring and, of course, accepted. My previous post was a love and appreciation letter about her. I also wrote one to her that was much different and more personal. I wrote it by hand to give it to her when I proposed. She cried when I proposed and again when she read the letter. I also showed her the post later that day. She liked it. I got a couple of little laughs and a loving look from her. She said I was exaggerating. Those guys were all talk. She's not a badass. Men don't flirt with her that often. Women are rarely mean to her and she'd kick my ass if I said otherwise. She was joking about that last part. I hope. <laughs> I'm sticking by what I wrote. She's a tough badass in my eyes. I really enjoyed writing both the post and the letter. So I started handwriting her little letters and poems. They're pretty bad, but she keeps each one. She even printed the post and saved that. She tells me she loves my writing because it makes her feel more connected when I express my feelings. I think that's her way of saying that it's the thought that counts. I'm amazed and kind of afraid of my fiancé. Aww. It's one of those posts where you just scrunch up your face and give it a good old ah. Congratulations on your engagement and I really do hope things continue to move in the way that they are at the moment. It sounds like you're a lovely little couple. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Wholesome ones are pretty rare to find these days, but they pop up occasionally. Let us know your thoughts. Now just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care.
and much love.